All right, everyone, when Hillary Clinton tells you something, the opposite is probably true. Hillary Clinton is invoking Russia some more and saying, Trump needs to do something about this. The Russians are still coming. Literally saying things that I would expect, like if you took it out of context, like you said, t took the quote, and you didn't tell somebody Hillary Clinton said it, didn't tell them when it was said, and you're like, you know, what period of time, what kind of person do you think would say this? They'd probably say like, oh, I don't know, maybe some senator from the 60s or 70s or something talking about the Soviet Union now, wouldn't they? Uh, and instead, it's actually like, no, it's actually a quote from two days ago from, you know, someone who just got done, you know, being thankfully defeated in a presidential campaign. Have we lost our minds at this point? Look, uh, Russia is starting now a new arms race. Uh, that is true, largely as a reaction, I think, to uh, what DC has been doing for the last several years. But it's, it's fairly undeniable that Russia is not responsible for every problem that is experienced within the US political system. This is the case, you look back at the, the first Cold War, or I should say the first wave of the Cold War since it never really went away. People were just, they got lazy, decadent, they got stupid, they thought, oh, well, you know, there's those nukes over there, well, now it's just Russia, so we care less. You know, they're dismantling some, this will obviously continue forever, and the world will be nuclear free, it'll be wonderful, save the whales. I remember, biggest problem people thought there was in the 90s was that the beluga whale might go extinct. Save the whales, stop deforestation, it's like, you know, environmental stuff, and some social reform. People started looking into that because there was no longer the Russian boogeyman to worry about. It's like, oh, it's just Yeltsin's Russia. Then, you know, the premier is just, he just wants to get drunk. He wants Budweiser, so let's give him Budweiser and we can get vodka and it'll be great. And that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> Clinton, she's there rambling about Russia. And much like in the first wave of the Cold War, yeah, there is a problem. The problem is arms race, uh, diplomatic standoff, certainly, could turn into a nuclear war because of a mistake or sabotage or you know, some, some other problems, some Dr. Strangelove scenario at some time. Those are definitely problems, but the fact that you have a nuclear standoff with an adversary does not mean that that adversary is responsible for all of your domestic problems. It doesn't mean the election didn't turn out the way the establishment wanted. It must have been Russia. You know, my server got hacked. It must have been Russians. Something else have you. It must Russia sabotage this Amtrak train. No. That's not the way that the world works. Yeah, again, it's just propaganda, and Russia does this too, in all honesty. It's a, an attempt to label something one-dimensional. They don't want you to think about, you know, any of the good side of Russian culture. You know, well, here's the history of the Russian language, and this is, you know, this is Russia's news opinions, and here's 10 things Vladimir Putin did that weren't shit fuckery. They don't want you to think about those things. They don't want you to think about the positive aspects of their political system or culture any more, by the way, than some group of Russians that wanted to maintain the Cold War posture would ever encourage you to say, oh, well, here's 10 good things we like about the US. Here's five, here's our f top five favorite pieces of American cuisine. No, it's gonna be one dimensional uh, bullshit about, oh, lay 56% phase or something like that. It's gonna be shit posting online. There will be actual propaganda, but here's the thing. The propaganda being constructed, some of it is just funny, to tell the truth honestly at this point on both ends. You know, a Putin meme that, that says that he drinks urine or, or the 56% uh, lay o grillo, <laughs> lay abomination. Stuff like that is funny. But here's the thing. It doesn't affect elections. No, I'm sorry, but a half, you know, what was it? $200,000 spent on Facebook ads by those 13 Russians that Mueller indicted. Do you understand how little that actually is in the frame of total spending on Facebook? On just politics alone, it's got to be in the hundreds of millions by this point. You know, across the internet, it's probably in the billions total, in, in total expenditures. By campaigns, by PACs and super PACs, organizations and lobbies associated with them, and even private individuals, you know, spreading some meme. They can pay to post something that's, you know, marginally political on Facebook. It's not against any law. It's perfectly acceptable. By the way, it's perfectly acceptable for people who aren't U.S. citizens to make memes about and, and buy ads about U.S. elections. Unless they're coordinating with a campaign, it doesn't violate any law. These 13 Russians are largely, other than the, uh, the monetary end of sucking down Kremlin bucks, and potentially, you know, they say, well, you're working for, a, for an enemy of the United States, which I don't think holds up, because Russia, we're not technically in a, a true war with them. 
uh, for the most part, I don't think that the argument is actually going to hold. I think that they're going to be exonerated. And then come forward and say, what, what exactly, what law did we really break? We didn't coordinate with the Trump campaign. We didn't coordinate with any campaign. We just bought some Facebook ads. There's no law against it. You can buy whatever you, you can buy any Facebook ad you want as long as it's within their TOS. Now Zuckerberg cracks down. He has a nervous breakdown. Even Facebook itself comes out and tells the political structure, hey, uh, it's a few ads. What are you so worried about? The number of people that were impacted by this is minuscule. They had to be a, a little bit, you know, optimistic though about the situation. They couldn't come out and say that uh, openly because then it would be akin to saying, hey, if you buy Facebook ads, you're not going to get any traffic from it. Nobody's going to care. 200,000 in ads is nothing. Ha ha ha. You know, you ma and pop store that wants to, you know, lay down 500 bucks pushing its Facebook page. Don't bother. Like 10 people might join the page for that. You know, you'll make 10 extra bucks at the end of the year. It's not worth it. But they didn't want to tell people that. They had to, they had to uh, hush hush and say, well, you know, you're a little bit overblowing it. Don't overreact. Uh, yeah, to reach this, you know, many people, a lot more than 200,000, but, you know, they didn't want to tell them that it probably didn't change anyone's mind. Oh, it was targeted at the uh, Michigan election, I think, or the Wisconsin election uh, was the idea. Mm, sure, so it was one of the close states. Of course it was. It couldn't have been that they targeted it at some, at some other state, you know, something that didn't flip uh, red for the first time in, what, five or six election cycles. It couldn't have been that they targeted ads at New Hampshire, but, but you know, uh, then Trump lost it anyway. No, you had to keep up the, uh, the sort of uh, bullshit line that Russia flipped the election. It makes sense for Clinton to invoke this. You know, there is a problem. We've got a new Cold War. That much is clear. We have a new arms race. I'll be talking about that separately. We have diplomatic tension, not just with Russia, but with China now, too. Now, we were getting along, kind of, and now Trump's saying there might be a trade war. And while I support the economic proposal itself, diplomatically, it could be problematic. We have tensions with Western Europe right now. We're in a dangerous period in the world's development. We've got worldwide decadence and a slowdown. Things are going to hit the fan at some point. It could involve a nuclear war. And I'm, I'm not even optimistic that the human race makes it another hundred years. To tell the honest truth, we're not that far into the atomic period. Certainly not very far into the thermonuclear period where enough weapons were held by enough countries for the world to actually be upended. Early atomic period, okay, we dropped a hundred atom bombs in your country, destroyed a hundred communities, you're still there, the human race isn't gone. Ultimately though, when you go thermonuclear and you're talking about, you know, five, ten megaton weapons, and thousands of them, you don't survive. I'm sorry, but there won't be any survivors at that point. Maybe somebody willing to live in a cave for a couple of years. They got a really, really high-tech solar setup. I mean, all these bunkers the rich people are building. Yeah, th those air filters are going to last long enough to shelter you from the radiation. You won't get in, bread. Don't worry. No, no starving army of people trying to get in will cement the front door so you can't even get out. They won't shove smoke bombs in the air vents or something. Of course it won't happen. Nobody will seek to suffocate you in your private bunkers. The Mormon church with its mountainside bunker system that it claims is just for like, I don't know, books and relics and stuff. Yeah, nobody's going to want to uh, take that fortified location from you and attack you. That won't happen. And don't worry. After the after Revelation, Mormons will come forth to be the only people left in the world. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. No, uh, Clinton's crazy. I'm getting tired of the, the offshoot Cold War propaganda that seeks to blame the political corruption of Hillary Clinton and the DNC and the Democratic Party at large and Podesta's corruption and their ineptitude with computer systems on Russia. I'm sorry, I don't believe the Ma Russia bullshit. I don't believe the DNC's servers were hacked by Russians. I don't think we're ever going to see proof that they were hacked by Russians. I think Mueller might come out and say that they were hacked by Russians. Oh, I'm indicting these people in connection with it. Are we ever going to see a shred of evidence? I don't believe so because I don't believe the official story. Absolutely not. And then Podesta's case, maybe. It's a separate hack. Uh, in the case of the DNC servers, though, is Obama 08 really that hard a password to guess? Is it so difficult to believe that some random staffer, maybe, of a, maybe his name was Seth, that's possible, some random staffer who happened to like Bernie more realized by looking through some of the emails, probably not something they were supposed to do, by the way, at the time, oh shit. Uh, this isn't a fair process. There is no primary. Whoops. Well, you know, oh, I accidentally put these on a USB. Oh, I accidentally addressed them to Julian Assange. Oh, well, shit. I just dropped it in a mailbox. Well, silly me. Then they wander on, you know, down the street and get shot in the back several times. But it's totally normal. 
Happens all the time in DC, you know, nothing nothing is taken from the robbery victim, that makes perfect sense. Because, you know, someone who wants to rob you, they're going to ignore that expensive watch and your wallet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, Clinton wants to blame Russia. She wants people to still think that the reason she lost was because a foreign state colluded with the Trump campaign. She doesn't want you to realize, hey, the establishment's just falling out of favor. Clinton's just boring. She's too boring. She didn't have a platform other than, hey, I'm a woman. And Trump is mean. He's orange and stuff. You're deplorable. Vote for me. Fucking vote for me, you irredeemable. It's not the way to run a campaign. That's the problem. Even the, even the DNC largely wasn't really responsive. It was the Hillary Clinton runs things like a baroness anyway. So even the DNC did, did it, take a backseat. They're like, oh, here's the money. Do what you need to do. She then turns around and attacks them as well. She said the reason she lost was the pink hats didn't come vote for her enough. The DNC didn't fundraise for enough. She had to take time off the campaign trail to go suck down Goldman Sachs money. She raises $2 billion. She outraises and outspends Trump in the end four to one. For a while, it was 10 to one. And uh, she had money problems. Her campaign had money problems. No, more like Trump's campaign was a skeleton crew. He realized, hey, you know, I can just make tweets and go to rallies. I don't need all this other stuff. How difficult is it? But you know, the thing is though, Hillary Clinton expected to get all sorts of concessions from the, the venues too. She wanted to pay through the nose. She wanted the expensive stuff. Trump, meanwhile, was like, oh, give me a Big Mac. Give me a Big Mac and some Dasani. You know, people, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. The fact that he's eating like cheap shitty shit uh, on the campaign trail and sort of, you know, roughing it almost at that point with these venues and stuff. Uh, whereas Hillary Clinton, who, you know, she's not, supposed she's not the billionaire mode, even though she is, she got all those Saudi buddies that'll take her in the drop of the hat and give her a palace of her own filled with a lake of oil she can bathe in with Dick Cheney. I'm sure that, that would be quite a, a wonderful time. His heart would stop. They'd have to give him several bypass surgeries, you know, during the course of a single afternoon. It'd be so exciting. Yeah, yeah, she's the one that meanwhile is like, she has a reputation for flying off the handle if something isn't quite right, you know. No, oh, you know, I, I ordered this kind of Chardonnay, not that kind, you know, for my election night victory that will never happen. And apparently spent like, what was it? There was some asinine amount of money was spent just on the graphics of a glass ceiling on the big projector screen at, the, at her headquarters you know, that was going to crack and shatter and fall onto the audience. You know, it would have been more funny to Hillary Clinton if it were real glass falling on them so that she could dance around in their dripping blood. Because that's the sort of thing she does with like Yemenis and, and so forth. That's actually great. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's definitely just as butcherous as Bush or Obama or any of the warmonger boys, which is exactly what she wanted people to know. Uh, which is exactly why she probably would have started a war by now. Oh, trust me, we'd be at war with some country. Maybe not Syria or Iraq or, or you know, something like that, but we might get involved in Yemen. Maybe, maybe we'd be in Venezuela. She'd be like, oh, they're not going to call me a leftist. I'm going to go kill socialists for a change. North Korea, who knows? Maybe she would have started a nuclear war with Russia and we'd all be dead. So I'm glad that she lost, but it's it's time for the establishment. The media... Uh, you know, the media tries to blame the fact that nobody trusts them on Russia. No, bullshit. It's, it's the responsibility of people like me on YouTube that's destroying your trust. Nobody wants to watch you. If they're young, they're not watching cable TV. Gen Z, they don't even know what a TV is. A TV, isn't that that device that I hook up to my gaming console? Isn't that the big screen I watch YouTube videos on or Netflix? They don't know what cable is. They don't fucking watch your show. They're not watching CNN. They go through the airport, they see CNN, what the hell, what YouTube channel is this, they probably ask. Hey, I did this is okay, maybe I can get this on Netflix. It's really what it boils down to. That's about all. Peace out.